All right, let's move on to question six. A student wants to determine the concentration of permanganate in a solution. The student plans to use colorimetric analysis because solutions containing permanganate have a purple color. So we have an absorbance graph here. Um, a says to determine the optimum wavelength for an experiment that measures the concentration of permanganate, the student takes a sample of the solution and measures the amount of light absorbed by the sample over a range of wavelengths. The data are plotted in the graph shown, identify the optimum wavelength that the student should use for the experimental procedure. Whenever you want to pick an optimum wavelength, you, also, you always want to go with the wavelength that produces the highest absorbance. Um, the reason you do that is because of like uh, experimental, it's to minimize your error. Uh, when you go to use Beer-Lambert's law to measure, uh, to calculate um, concentration, if you pick uh, the wavelength with the highest absorbance, your error will be the least. Um, and so our absorbance, the highest absorbance is about here, which is at about 525 nanometers. So uh, we want to use the 500 nanometers uh, mark because that produces the highest absorbance. Let's go on to part B. Uh, the student uses a stock solution of 2.40 times 10 to the negative 3, uh, whoops, uh, 2.40 times 10 to the negative 3 molar potassium permanganate to prepare the standard solutions of permanganate that are needed to construct a calibration curve. If you look at I, the student uses a 100 mil graduated cylinder to measure a certain volume of uh, potassium permanganate stock solution as shown in the diagram given. What volume should the student record? Um, when recording a volume, you always want to look at the lowest point, that's the meniscus, um, and the lowest point tells you that it's about 92 uh, mils. 92 mils is, is what you're sure of, but when you're recording a measurement like you are here, you're allowed to add one more significant digit than you are certain of. So if you look here, um, that the meniscus looks like it's actually like exactly at 92. So um, we can say it's 92.0 mils. So um, what volume can the should the student record? Uh, it's going to be 92.0 milliliters. Um, let's go to two. Calculate the volume in milliliters of 2.40 times 10 to the negative 3 molar potassium permanganate that is required to produce 100 mils of a standard 1.68 times 10 to the negative 3 molar uh, a permanganate solution. This is a clear dilution problem, and for dilution problems, you should probably use uh, M1 V1 equals M2 V2. Um, so let's say our initial, our M1 is going to be the potassium permanganate, and then our M2 stuff is going to be the uh, permanganate solution. So we know our concentration of our potassium permanganate is 2.40 times 10 to the negative 3 molar and we want to find out v1 um, and our m2 is 1.68 times 10 to the negative 3 molar um, and our volume is 0 0.1 liters so if you do the math out on that that's going to be 1.68 times 10 to the negative 3 uh, times 0 0.1 and then we want to divide this entire thing by 2.40 uh, times 10 to the negative 3 um, and that will get us our uh, volume in liters so 0 0.07 liters uh, which is about 70 which is which is 70 milliliters so that's your answer let's go on to part C the student designs the following procedure to produce a calibration curve uh, step one, prepare several standard solutions that have known permanganate concentrations by dilution of the stock solution. Step two, rinse the curvette with distilled water. Uh, step three, rinse the curvette with uh, the standard solution and fill the curvette with the standard solution. Uh, step four, measure the absorbance of the standard solution with the calorimeter. Step five, repeat steps two to four for each of the standard solutions. Uh, the data are plotted in the calibration curve shown. One of the data points um, on the calibration curve is below the line of best fit. Assuming that all lab equipment is functioning properly, identify which one of the procedural steps the student could have executed incorrectly that would explain why the marked data point is below the line of best fit. If you look at this point here, this point is below where it should be. Um, the absorbance of this point should be higher than it is. So let's look through our steps and see which step, if we did wrong, would produce an absorbance that is lower than it should be. Um, I'll save you some time. If you look at step three, step three tells you to rinse the curvette with 
with standard solution. And you do this after rinsing the curvette with distilled water. Now, if you neglect this part of step three, what's gonna happen is that the distilled water is gonna stay in your curvette. Um, and then when you add the standard solution to that curvette, what's gonna happen is that, that the, the water that you rinsed it with is going to distill your solution, is gonna, uh, or dilute your, your solution. Um, and since it's diluted, the absorbance is gonna be lower than it should be. So what, um, what could you have executed correct, incorrectly? Um, this part of step three, you could have forgotten to rinse the curvette with the standard solution. You could have neglected that part, which would mean your standard solution would be would be uh, diluted with the distilled water, um, which would decrease the absorbance. So if the student didn't rinse the curvette with the standard solution as it says to do in step three, the distilled water could have diluted the solution which would incorrectly decrease the measured absorbance. Um, and that was question six. I hope that was helpful. I hope you were able to learn something. I have the rest of the questions in a playlist. Uh, feel free to check them out. Um, again, thank you for watching and I'll see you later. Peace.